I am really getting used to just waking up in downtown Seoul and walking about two minutes to random barbecues and stews and markets. I can see why people love living here. So I think I'm gonna extend my stay a little bit. Originally I was only gonna be here for about a week. I'm thinking we'll just keep it indefinite for now. Like maybe a week and a half, two weeks. I don't know. Today I'm heading to Jeonju, a traditional small city that's known for amazing food. Some say that's actually the food capital of South Korea. Let's see about that. Right now it's about 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. Is it is it too early for barbecue? Right? Let's go. Someday I want a beautiful picture like this hanging up in my living room. Before we get to the barbecue, which I definitely want for breakfast, uh, I just found this place. They serve one dish, and I love these type of restaurants in Korea. One dish, and it's some sort of soup. There it is, this place. Opens at 7 a.m. Ooh, it's famous. Huh. Shrimp sauce. Preserved veggies, kimchi. So this place serves only one dish. And it's polak. It's a fish soup. Fish and egg drop tofu soup. This is the only thing they serve here. This will go into here, and then you can put your kim cheese in your plate, and the scallions will go with the rice. And because there's only one dish here, I didn't even have to order. You sit down, they bring the only dish to you. I had a cold the last few days. I feel like that thing just went away with one sip of this broth. It's a very mild fish flavor, and that's like pretty much all you taste. So you gotta add some spices into it, otherwise it might come off as a little bland. And that's why there's so much kimchi. Oh, that's just perfect. Especially being a windy, cold, rainy day. This hits the spot so hard. The shrimp sauce adds a bit more of the brininess. Mm. Oh man, a little scallion dish. Oh, that is salty and shrimpy. You do need a lot of country to eat with this. If you want a different it's a spice and texture. And the broth is not really thin, so it's really, really hearty. This thing will warm you up and it will fill you up. But for me, this is a perfect setup for the barbecue. Nobody wants to go eat barbecue with a cold stomach. I love things that completely just warms you up thoroughly once it goes into your stomach. And that soup did the trick. Man, that's hearty. And when I woke up, I wanted barbecue for breakfast, so I'm not giving up that dream. Just walked upon this random little side street, and there's a ton of 24-hour Korean barbecue places. I was kind of worried I wouldn't be able to find, there's, ah, oh, they're everywhere. Everything is 24 hours. I love Korea. This place looks pretty good. Anytime when I see meat in the window, It's always catches my attention. Let's get a big whiff of dry aged meat here. I like that. It's not open, but it, it. They got Wagyu here, so I got a Wagyu set, a Liao Mian cold noodles. I think that's gonna be really amazing. Barbecue places are only good if they use wood charcoal. This brings out so much smoky flavor. Oh, makes your meat taste even better. I love it when the meat looks like ran a marathon. I think Korea is a great place to retire. Even the meat, barely need to chew it. Cheese optional. The best barbecue, all you need is a little bit of salt. Gotta get some cold noodles. Anytime you eat Korean barbecue, pair it with cold noodles. Mustard and vinegar is a must. Take the meat. Mummify it with the cold noodles and don't. Also, what I love about this country is that this big bowl of noodles is considered a side dish. If you want to make this more traditional, you can order like a steamed egg. Just your stick in it for breakfast. Only in Korea. Walk into a Korean restaurant, order up a barbecue at like 9 o'clock in the morning. Nobody bats an eye. There's so many different ways to eat beef. 
Eat it with the noodles, make a little sum out of it. You want to eat it with veggies, noodles, all up to you. Can't do that at a typical steakhouse, can you? Pop a raw garlic with your body beef. This meat quality is so amazing. Like, this is pretty much everywhere you go. This piece with a big piece of fat in there. Oh, no. I don't know. Even the fully lean ones are remarkably juicy. And then, when we get a piece with a big chunk of fat on there, it's like you just open a floodgate. I give you barbecue every single day. I don't get a shake of that. In fact, after eating this, probably tonight I'll start craving it. I mean, I don't know if it's actually like you like from Japan. It tastes more like Hangul Korean beef, which has a much stronger, beefier flavor. And it's remarkably tasty on its own. I sometimes prefer it over wagyu because it's not as fatty, so you don't feel like it's overwhelming you too much. My last bits of steaks. Korean barbecue is like one of the only cuisines where I can buy two of my favorite things in the world steaks and noodles. And it's very much encouraged. Now this morning is complete. Gotta go back to the hotel, pack up. We're getting out of here. Whew. Oh, look at this weather. I would have loved this in Seattle where I could just sit at home and do nothing. Luckily, Korean barbecue place? My hotel. <laughs> Told you. Everywhere you go, you're gonna find a good Korean barbecue place or a good restaurant near you. Actually, I should apologize. I keep calling it Korean barbecue. I'm in Korea, so it's just barbecue. This is Yongsan Station. This is where I'm gonna be catching the bullet train. And I would really love it if I could find some lunch boxes to eat on the train. I feel like in Asia, when you're riding any train, whether that's in uh, Taiwan, Japan, or Korea, you gotta have lunch boxes. It's just a must. Uh, okay, kind of limited selection, but these look good. It's rice ball stuffed with and fried tofu stuffed with tuna. Ooh, I love tuna. Let me get some of this stuff. So excited to ride on the train, man. I don't know why. Like I, I never get like this in U.S. Like Amtrak here. Humongous space. On the train now to Jeonju, waiting on the tracks for about, you know, next five minutes or so. Just wanna give a quick shout out to Toro. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video. And if you don't know, Toro is a peer-to-peer -peer car sharing service. It's got over 850 makes and models across 5,500 cities in the US, Canada, Germany, UK. And on average, it's about 30% cheaper than your regular car rental service. And they deliver the car directly to you. It's really cool because if you have a car you're not using, you can rent it out. If there's a car you're interested in buying, you just wanna drive it around for a day. It's most likely available on here. Personally, I um, always wanted to drive a Porsche Spider, so kind of looking at that right now. It's really pretty out here in the Pacific Northwest, so I don't know. Be nice to rent a really nice car and take and explore the area a little bit. Also, everybody in the Toro community is green, and you have access to uh, different insurance through the Toro Insurance Agency. So if you're interested, the link is down below. And you can use my promo code for $15 off your first trip. All right, we're on our way. Check out the bento boxes here. Ooh. So this is called Toshida in Korean. Um, it's sesame wrapped rice ball. And this one is tuna. I love anything tuna. There's things like rice and tuna salad with aromatic sprinkles of sesame. Great. Rice is perfect. Texture spot on. This one's the egg. Egg is so juicy and sweet. This whole thing is more like a dessert. That's throwing me off a bit. It's a juicy egg. Like a it's almost like egg candy. That is the best one. Oh, bright tofu shell, little piece of sesame and radish to give it that fun little crunch. The minced meat has little bits of onions inside. Saucy, sweet, so flavorful. Mm. A choco cookie. Not bad. That's why I love trains. You don't see the 
this flying airplane. Hour and a half later, we're here. Not a drop of rain in sight. Complete different climate than so. Wow, there's a really traditional part of this city. It's, uh, it's a place called Hanak Village, where my, my hotel is. And this is it. I think this is my house. Actually, this is my room. Cozy little place, $80 a night. Hotels in the city is really hard to get. There's not that many hotels. So you could stay at these like almost um, Airbnb type places inside the, the, the Hanak village. A lot of mosquitoes. I'm very afraid right now. They told me the mosquitoes here don't bite. Don't really bite that. I gotta eat more so I have enough blood to last through the night. Look at this place. I mean, look at this place. It's like it's still fall here when in Seoul is already winter. And this is only about an hour and a half south by train, but the climate, like the weather, is so different. And it's the cafe. The cafes look like this. So nice to be able to sit here, enjoy a little cup of tea. First of all, I love using this to eat anything. <clears throat> the little um, sesame bean desserts. It's like a sesame bean cake. There's a cat here. He sounds so weird. Sorry, kitty, but you do. Now he's shy. Before it was just like, ear, ear, ear. like a like a kitty siren. Highly recommend it if you are ever in South Korea, if you're ever going to Seoul, take a couple days here. Trust me. Literally couldn't get a train ticket back. Everything was sold out. Bus ticket sold out too. Got last row seats on one bus. Gonna take about three hours to get back into Seoul. It is pouring outside. This is a Korean rest stop. Freshly made Korean dishes at this rest stop. Bone soup skewers. I don't know which bus. Oh, that was a long bus ride. Scheduled for two and a half hours, it took four hours. I'm in Jenda. This is apparently the, the Chinese area of Seoul. All right, finally here. Mala Xiangu. Spicy Chinese food on a cold rainy day. Gotta have the meat. That's gotta be a good base foundation of it all. Oh, I did not know this. This place also has liangpi. Oh, I gotta try their liangpi. Although we were warned by the auntie that we ordered way too much food. I am so excited. I, I miss Chinese food whenever I don't have it. This place actually is really cool. They have yum tea, they have burgers. I wish I knew they had like a bunch of other dishes because then I would have got less the xiangguo and more other dishes. But we'll definitely They do a great version of this dish here. It's insanely good. The texture is chewy and smooth and the chilies, the use of chilies is magnificent. Not overbearing, but at the same time, it lights your mouth on fire a little bit. Bit of sesame sauce with just a tad sweetness because it is Korea. This might be my favorite version of this dish outside of China. Oh, the mouthfeel. 
They just threw the roof. Oh, they didn't just add chilies. I mean, a whole lot of spices in here. Tastes a bunch of cumin. There's some star anise, some peppercorn. Mmm. Oh my god. That potato's divine. Had a purple rice cake before. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Oh my god. Oh, that was insane. There's a yam rice cake. And there was a little bit of a custardy sweet soup inside. I didn't expect that. Milky mushrooms and meat. So much flavor. Every single ingredient is covered in the sauce and spices. My favorite thing in here, potatoes, fatty beef of course, and tofu skin. Love it. A bite of the shangguo. Then immediately chase it with some liang pi. I think that's actually a great combo. Because the liang pi is so smooth and the sauce is so creamy. It really quills the heat. And even though we got the minimal spice, there's still some heat in here. I'm surprised at that. Maybe watch out if you try to get the spiciest. It might serve you a burning pot of lava. Oh, spam. Only time when spam is actually appreciated is at the dinner table. This, oh, I'm so in love right now. As much as I love Korean food, and I, I'm in Korea, of course, that's what I'm eating most of the time, I miss Chinese food. I do. The spices, the chilies, the peppercorn. I miss this, really. Ugh, I'm sweaty. I've got a runny nose. Either I'm digressing in terms of the amount of heat I can take or it'll give a rip when you order minimal spicy. Nearing the bottom here. About to polish it off. Lesson in life, kids. Don't let anyone tell you. You can't finish your big pot of mala shangguo. All right? Because you can do it. I'll be staying a holiday for the next few days. This is a really vibrant place, especially at night. Hotel so cool. Wow, look at all those. That, I feel very loved right now. Oh, cool. Chocolate covered almonds. Whole flipping jar of candy. This is the best welcome gift ever. Oh my goodness, look at this. What is, what is this? What? Oh, this is a game. That is neat. I like that. This whole thing is such a cool room. Wait, what is this? Oh, this is so cool. So this is a lifeline in case there's a fire. I, I hooked this up to somewhere and I toss it out the window. You know what? I feel very assured that hotels in Korea have things like that. Bathroom looks like a spa. Look at this. Double mirrors. What? What is in here? Face mask? Don't mind if I do. All the amenity kits are in here. Whoa. Shower stall. Tub. A complete see-through toilet throne. Shower scrub. Oh my gosh. Loving my room right now. All right, I gotta go hit the gym. It's been like three days of nonstop eating. And then straight to bed. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you later.